Hello. Um, we'll talk about FRTB, which stands for uh, Fundamental Review of Trading Book. It's related to market risk, so we'll talk about a bit about market risk today, and we'll learn basics of FRTB. Very recent regulations. It's just been four years since it has come uh, to force, and its impact banks are still struggling to implement FRTB. So we'll, we will learn a bit, uh, bit about this topic. So FRTV stands for Fundamental Review of Trading Book. Um, as the name suggests, it has to do with trading book, not to do with banking book. So loans are um, related to banking book, whereas uh, trading is related to trading book. Okay, so we are not talking here about, let's say, corporate loans or retail loans. We are talking about banks' activity in trading, uh, whether it's trading of commodities or uh, dealing with bonds and trading of derivatives and so on and so forth. Um, in Basel II, uh, market risk was based on value at risk or VAR. Um, However, it was felt that that's not a good enough uh, matrix to measure capital requirement um, for market risk. Um, and during 2008 crisis, financial crisis, um, it was felt that um, while value at risk wasn't really um, uh, working very well. And regulators actually uh, always act upon things once it has happened so they realize that okay now war is not working well let's come up with something else so they took many years to come up with something called uh, something different we will learn but the set of rules that came up after the crisis you call the call it as frtv okay so that's in nutshell what frtv is we'll learn a bit of nuances about frtv um, there are two approaches introduced in FRTV. One is the standardized approach, the other one is the um, IMA approach, which is internal modeling, basically. If you are familiar with uh, credit risk, uh, it, it's your advanced IRB model, right? So that's similar to that. So SA means standardized, that means regulators will provide you uh, calculation formula for your capital. Now, those who are not familiar with what is capital, capital is basically a buffer that you should keep to ensure that in bad days uh, you are solvent. You do not, I mean, the bank does not um, become insolvent. Um, so, banks have to keep capital to account for the risk they are taking in the business, in the day to day business. And regulator makes sure that uh, reg uh, banks really keep enough capital for activities and trading is a very risky uh, activity hence regulators enforce uh, banks to have enough capital for these activities okay and in SA approach regulators provide the formula for banks to calculate whereas in IMA approach banks can build their own market risk models to uh, you know, to sort of uh, build models that then can be used for uh, capital calculation. So now standardized approach uh, consists of three components. One is sensitivity risk charge, and other one is default risk charge, and the third one is a residual risk charge. And these three things are calculated using three different, you know, financial metrics called Delta, Vega, and uh, curvature okay uh, now delta vega and curvature together is calculated and that constitute the sensitivity risk charge okay um, in brief we can call it as sensitivity is how sensitive market is towards the movement uh, of uh, I mean how sensitive your instrument is towards the market movements but um, that's only the first part, okay? There are two other parts, default risk charge and residual risk add-on. Now, default risk charge, or it's called also DRC, is to, uh, it's more like a, a extra capital that you need to incur for stressed or more default scenarios. 
Now that something sensitivity risk I cannot properly account, take it into account. Hence, DRC or default risk charge is uh, required, which takes into account more stressed and sort of default uh, incidents into account. And the residual risk charge is something that is on top of these two, which is more of a, uh, an add-on if in case uh, regulators feel that first and second the SRC sensitivity risk charge and default risk charge together are not enough and that's when uh, residual risk add-on is added okay as I said default and stressed events are assessed in DRC so that's something we have already discussed right in the internal model approach you have expected shortfall plus default risk charge and stressed capital add-on now the second two are same the difference is of course coming from the expected shortfall by the way this delta vega and curvature are something given by the regulators so you don't have to build models for them okay whereas the expected shortfall here in this case is a replacement for value at risk and expected shortfall is something that banks have to calculate themselves as well as, uh, as well as default risk charge by the way both. and stress capital add-on is something that is on top of expected shortfall and DRC and so what's the difference between expected shortfall and value at risk well value at risk was used to know that at certain percentage confidence level for example let's say 95 percent confidence level what is the probability of losing a certain amount, right? So you can say, okay, there's 5% chances, there's 5% chance that you will lose more than, you know, $5,000 in the next uh, trading day, okay? So for a 24-hour trading uh, or one-day trading horizon, you... Um, basically um, calculate buyer as 5,000 at 95% confidence level, $5,000, right? So the, the, the problem is that that does not tell anything about the expected loss because uh, sometimes it in very rare event, the losses could also be higher than that and, the, it's called, and sometimes significantly higher. So it does not tell anything about the tail aspect of it. Whereas expected shortfall takes into account more of an average view of the future. So at 95% confidence level, how much I can expect to lose? Okay. Um, so you, it, it takes more of a probabilistic approach wherein you multiply the probability with respect to the average losses you can, maybe you can ex then calculate the expected losses at that confidence level for a given uh, period. And DRC is again similar to what we discussed. But, you know, here in this case, you have to it, uh, calculate through models, not through regulatory formula. And stress capital add-on is something that is again on top of these two. Okay, a bit about the expected shortfall we have discussed, which is uh, expected shortfall replaces VAR. It's uh, about average expected loss at a given confidence level. And it is sensitive to tail risk. That means unlike VAR, which is not sensitive to tail risk, tail risk, uh, and tail risk is a problem in all kinds of market uh, modeling where you have sometimes fat tail but in this case uh, expected shortfall takes care of it so these are some of the uh, things that uh, are new in market risk and these are covered in frtd thank you